So in this video, I'm going to continue with the ISD1820 chip and adding more versatility to it by allowing for control voltage input uh, over the pitch. Well, that's an interesting sound. When you speed it up, you could actually make little sounds with the sampler chip in various pitches and frequencies. It's like another instrument for the drum machine. So when we left off, uh, we were using this ISD1820 um, sampler, looper, um, lo-fi um, chip. Uh, this was a control module that it comes on and we had modified it uh, to be able to manually adjust pitch control and uh, input uh, with the microphone as well as an audio line in feature. Today I'm going to continue this by adding a little bit more versatility to usage of this module and to allow for the um, input of both control voltage and a gating signal to sort of automate it, um, automate the use of this chip from a, a device such as a sequencer and add it potentially to our drum machine as a separate voice. First, I wanted to make a correction to the previous video. So the spot um, where the audio output is was an error in the previous video where the asterisk is located is the speaker negative terminal and instead it's the lower uh, pin that is the audio output and that's where it should be hooked up when we left off in the previous video i had desoldered the r4 resistor in the upper right corner and connected a wire down to the lower part of that resistor uh, where that resistor is attached and uh, connected it to via a 10k resistor to a 100k potentiometer uh, that function as a voltage divider between um, VCC and ground and it allowed for manual pitch control so now I want to add a feature of automation um, and via controlled voltage uh, to control the pitch on the fly uh, from an external source uh, such as a sequencer so in order to use the um, ROSC feature, which is the um, uh, pitch control um, on the ISD1820 in an automated fashion, uh, the way that works, as a reminder, is using a 100K resistor uh, to ground, which is what the module comes with, and um, that controls the pitch and the sampling rate of the playback as well as the record feature. Now, in order to automate that, you need some form of controlled voltage. And so it's basically the pin 10 connected to uh, via resistor to ground that controls it. And the, the module comes with a 100K resistor, but if you decrease that resistance, the pitch goes up. Um, and if you decrease the resistor, the pitch goes down. So you can use it manually with a potentiometer. And this is illustrated here in the original circuit diagram. But how do we use it in a uh, way where we can automate it using a control voltage? And so that um, is going to need to use um, a variable resistor that's voltage controlled. Um, so how do we do that? Well, we're going to use a transistor as a voltage controlled resistor. So the transistor, um, a little known property of the transistor, besides the fact that it's a switch, um, that could be used as a switch, is that um, if you apply uh, an NPA 0 0.7 volts uh, to an NPN transistor, it turns on and it uh, it turns on the the flow of current from uh, from collector to emitter. Um, but if you go below the 0 0.7 volts, what happens is the transistor um, functions as uh, the, a, a current limiting resistor. Uh, basically, the transistor is not really on and not really off, but um, it's on with an, with an impedance that's controlled by the amount of voltage applied to the base of it. So um, if you're at 0 0.7, uh, below 0 0.7 volts, 
um, the amount of voltage in incremental fashion applied to uh, if you were going to do a, a current um, versus voltage graph um, before the transistor turns on, if this is the 0 0.7 uh, volt range, it looks something like this. And then it becomes linear. And then at 0 0.7 volts, it's on, it's saturated. Um, and the transistor is com uh, completely on. Um, so how do we harness uh, this power over here? Um, and the, the, what, we're, what we're intending to do is basically something like this, where you're applying a control voltage. This is coming out of a sequencer with various potentiometers, giving you a, a voltage output at each step of 0 to 5 volts. Oh, what a tangled web we weave. Sequencer with control voltage for my sampler based on the ISD 1820. So the control voltage coming in here is in the range of 0 to 5 volts at each step set by the four different potentiometers. And so what we want to do with that is we want to scale it down to a region that's in this voltage range less than 0 0.7 volts and so we scale it down by um and we want it to be in the realm of 0 to 100 millivolts uh because we want it to we want this to use this sweep because this is going to apply this is going to be like a resistor um and um and we add it to a transistor bias voltage to keep it in this range somewhere over here and not all the way at the very bottom where it's relatively flat in the exponential curve. So we want the control voltage to be at around between around 500 millivolts and 600 millivolts, which takes us into this exponential range where a, incre a tiny increment or uh, an incremental uh, voltage in this gives you potentially a very uh, uh, high change um, in the current, which makes this resistor into a transistor into a variable resistor to ground. So what we do is we apply this to pin 10, the ROSC pin, the resistance controlled oscillator of the ISD1820 uh, chip. And the way to do that is relatively straightforward. Um, you basically need um, to start with base bias voltage. You want to bias the voltage of the transistor uh, to less than 0.7 volts. And so in my experience, if you bias it to about 500, 550, 510 millivolts, um, that is accomplished by a simple um, 100K potentiometer between um, uh, wired as a, a voltage divider between um, five volts and ground. And you put it down to uh, a relatively low level, which is you can measure it out with a voltmeter, uh, with a multimeter at uh, around 500 millivolts. And you that's your bias signal. And you connect that to the base of the transistor. Um, then you want your control voltage input, which is basically zero to five volts and you want to scale it down. So to scale it down, you, you know, you put it through a volt, another voltage divider, which is, you know, a hundred K resistor and a 10 K resistor to ground. Um, that way, uh, it's scaled down to about one tenth. Um, you know, the, the voltage here will be, um, uh, 10 over 100 plus 10, uh, which, which is about equal to a tenth, uh, it's 0.45 volts um, maximum. Um, right, zero to 0.45 volts. Um, and then what you do with this is you add it to this voltage. So that you have 
the voltage applied to the base of the transistor to be in this range, around 500 millivolts to 600 millivolts. This is the original zero to five volt control voltage scaled down and added to the bias voltage of the transistor. And this is the voltage range you get on the oscilloscope. That gets connected to um, pin 10, uh, which is the ROSC pin, and this gets connected to ground. And so in this way, whenever a control voltage is applied to uh, this transistor, um, the transistor is not quite on because it's less than 0.7 volts, but it functions as a, um, a variable resistor that turns on along this curve, this exponential curve. So that's how that works. The transistor never turns on, but it functions like a voltage controlled resistor. Um, and when you uh, apply that voltage to the base, the transistor functions as a resistor. So the collector of this transistor is going to ground. So the, it basically when it's less open, the resistance is high and when it's, uh, and you can dial it in to um, a playback voice. So let's hear what this sounds like with the word testing uh, played with voltage control. And those are the four voltages dialed into this. I have it going up in sequential order. Testing. Um, from a very low voltage applied to the base of that transistor um, to a very high one. And so this corresponds to about one volt on the first one. Testing. Two three and five so when it's wide open it makes that little loud chipmunk noise and so you can use this to control voltage control for um the um so that that big red wire right here is going through that yellow wire into r4 the pin of r4 that i removed from this board and that is basically controlled uh, or connected through the resistor to ground. So that is um, our voltage controlled um, playback speed applied to pin, basically it connects to pin 10 of this chip, which is the um, resistance controlled oscillator. Testing. Pretty stable, Testing. even though it's temperature dependent. Testing. But it, uh, when you first turn it on, it Testing. requires a little tweaking because the transistor is cold, and um, you have to Testing. adjust the biasing voltage using this potentiometer. With very very fine um, control. The voltage division of a 5 volt circuit is basically a 100k resistor here and then divided down with a 10k resistor. So um, it gives you a uh, biasing voltage of about uh, 0.45 volts. Um, and big swings in these potentiometers um, only apply a very small uh, voltage change here. As you can see, I have a division set to 100 millivolts. And it's basically Testing. cycling between 518 and 624 Testing. millivolts. And that's it. That's the Testing. very tight, tight range. Um, <clears throat> but once you get it in there, it works like a charm. Testing. Here it is a little bit sped up. So I've now added all the fixings to this board, including these three push buttons, which take it off the board so you could activate it. Um, play edge, play or play level, play edge and record, and then separate um, triggers 
through these little wires here, through diodes so it doesn't backfire um, into the uh, circuit. This is the um, line in. Um, there's the microphone off the board right there. And um, this is the the CD4017 that I've, uh, and with the LFO controlling it, and this is putting out CV. So I have uh, something recorded in the chip, and I'm using this, um, basically this uh, transistor as a transistor to ground, um, but the CV outputs, which come through these four diodes, um, go into one point and each of these potentiometers behind there are set to a different uh, voltage between zero and five volts and they're scaled down through a voltage divider um, into the base of this transistor which basically um, keeps it in the range just before being open so the 500 to 630 something millivolt range um, and uh, what that does is it makes the transistor uh, go from a high resistance uh, or low resistance to high resistance, depending upon the, the voltage there. And um, the voltage is sent out um, to through this blue wire um, into the board at the R4 position through that little yellow wire down there. Um, and let's hear what it sounds like at full range. I think that's pretty much everything I could do to this board and set it up like an extra voice for a sequencer circuit to play samples. And this is our sampler beginnings.